Imagine for a moment that you once had a prominent rap career. You really liked the attention and the money, you successfully managed to release several albums, and made millions of dollars. But then, the industry begins to catch up. Your popularity wanes, but only a little, and you leverage that into an unsuccessful acting career and a $50 million deal to promote the World Poker Fund. But that doesn't revive your career, and your albums and singles slip further and further out of the top 40, then the top 100, then 200, and one day you realize you haven't had a release make the billboard since 2011. It's time for a change. So you announce that you're releasing a retro video game console made by a company known for cheaply made emulators of popular classics from days of yore. What? Okay, okay, let's back up. There's this rapper, DeAndre Cortezway, who goes by the pseudonym Soldier Boy. He's 28 years old and has had a lot of success as a writer and a performer. He made huge waves back in 2007 when he independently released his first single, Crank That, which immediately topped the US charts. The single was picked up for use in the popular HBO TV series Entourage, and he launched his own label, Stacks on Deck, where he released his second album, peaking at number four of the top albums of 2007. Now here's where I have to branch the story, because Mr. Way has released a lot of music, and this story is about his video game consoles. As the popularity of his music literally dropped off the charts, it seems Mr. Boy decided that his love and enjoyment of video games, the world's most profitable artistic medium, could be transformed into a powerhouse of profit, a cash cow, a golden goose. Thus, in early 2017, he released his own mobile game, purportedly developed by Mickey Lacoste. I couldn't immediately tell whether this is the same Mickey Lacoste that, in 2017, had a part in the 3.5 out of 10 star horror movie, Stripperland. But again, we're not here to talk about that. The game, called Beef with Soldia, is a top-down scrolling coin collector that requires you to jump and dodge street obstacles such as police officers and traffic cones, collecting coins while Mr. Way's voice announces your every movement. It's a very simple, free-to-play game supported by ads and in-game purchases. His second mobile game is called Fighting Soldier Draco Edition on the iTunes Store. It's apparently just Soldier Boy on the Google Play Store. And it was developed by Brian Mizrahi, a Los Angeles based marketer who's worked for Zappos and Disney. It's a side scrolling platforming coin collector and apparently supported by in game purchases and ads as well. I did find a third game, which appears to be a simple side-scrolling shooter that looks like it took a little too much inspiration from Plants vs. Zombies. I'll leave it to you to decide for yourself. I couldn't immediately figure out whether this app was officially from Soldier Boy or simply piggybacking on the popularity of his nickname as the Draco. The developer, Pixel Gang Studios, sells custom games out of a studio in Philadelphia. Quote, all we need is a side view picture of the hero. We can provide the game for all to play, says their website. Whatever success Mr. Way has had with his mobile games seems to have only encouraged him to find more ways to squeeze money out of gamers' wallets and into his. We played these games for about five seconds each before realizing why someone like Mr. Boy would be inclined to market someone else's higher quality games. So fast forward to December 2018 and Mr. Way announces not just one, but three video game emulation consoles. In a December 7th interview with Rolling Stone, he explained that he's given up on creating his own games, instead opting to market emulator consoles made by Ann Burnick, an AliExpress seller that claims to provide these consoles along with thousands of retro games. Boy's website seems conspicuously unwilling to list the games that are included in the console, but a quick look at the Anbernic store on AliExpress reveals that these emulators typically come with NES, SNES, PS1, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance, and other games. These ROMs, named for the read-only memory in which they were traditionally stored in their original cartridge-based format, are the source of much of this controversy. The console hardware itself likely isn't illegal. From what I've been able to find, the hardware inside is basically just a microcontroller, some additional memory, and a graphics chip. 
The same hardware is purportedly used to make a variety of media players, which are widely available in certain marketplaces such as eBay and AliExpress. The three consoles Mr. Way appears to be selling seem to be the same consoles already available for lower prices but without the Soldier Boy name. The Portable appears to be just a $70 emulator that he's marked up to $160. The HD model appears to be a $70 console that he's marked up to $212. And the Soldier Game Fuse appears to be the same as a console made by Fuse Entertainment of China, which launched in 2016 when China lifted their ban on game consoles. Consoles. That console is an Android-based platform which connects to their online service. It appears Mr. Wei is simply marketing the console under his name for a quick profit. By the way, it appears that the Fuse is still exclusively in the Chinese language and that it will not be translated into English. If I were going to purchase this console, I would want that question to be answered for sure. Anyway. Anyone who is familiar with the world of video games will immediately see that these consoles, their hardware, and their games share some striking similarities to popular products from Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft. These similarities quickly lead to accusations of copyright and trademark infringement, and those accusations are quickly countered by a very defensive Mr. Boy, who has resorted to insulting anyone who dares question whether he has the proper license from the various developers and distributors whose permission would be required to reset or otherwise distribute their games. So I thought we could have a quick look at the ways this could be legal and the ways this quickly becomes illegal. I also thought it would be fun to look at some previous cases that these parties have separately been involved in, and I thought I might explain what litigation this situation may spark in the very near future. First, let's talk about previous cases involving emulators and ROMs. Nintendo is a very litigious company who vigorously protects their rights. If they feel that any of these consoles infringe on their rights, they will definitely sue. Oh, and though we're going to talk mostly about Nintendo, this includes other rights holders as well, such as Sony. Earlier in 2018, Nintendo obtained a stipulated judgment, meaning the parties agreed to a judgment in lieu of a trial for both an injunction and a damage award of over 12 million US dollars against Jacob and Christian Matthias, a husband-wife pair who ran LoveRoms.com and LoveRetro.co, where over 17 million monthly visitors could download unauthorized ROMs and the emulators to play them. Facing a lengthy trial and damages of $2 million or more for each instance of trademark infringement and $150,000 for each infringement of copyright, the couple settled, admitting to the accusations, shutting down their site, turning over their domains, and agreeing never to sell or distribute ROMs again. The legal claims in that case were mostly copyright and trademark infringement. Copyright is the law that protects creative expression that has been fixed into a tangible medium from whence it can be displayed, performed, etc. Copyright protects works for the life of the author plus 70 years for individuals and 75 years for works of corporate authorship. Anyone wishing to make use of another's copyright either has to have permission or fall within one of very few exceptions. A copyright owner can forbid the copying, distribution, performance, and creation of derivative works unless the user is making a fair use, selling their legal copy, or in classroom instruction. The Librarian of Congress and the Register of Copyrights also creates and maintains a list of exceptions to certain copyright protection measures such as DRM or Digital Rights Management. These are the digital locks which protect material from being accessed by an unauthorized party. DRM often prevents users from making even legal uses of the material under one of these exceptions, so more exceptions had to be made to allow the circumvention of these technological protection measures. Anyone who violates violates the core copyrights or illegally bypasses technological protection measures is potentially guilty of copyright infringement, which carries both a criminal and civil component. A prosecutor or U.S. attorney can bring a criminal charge of copyright infringement, and a civilian or corporation can bring a lawsuit for civil claims. Then there's also trademark, which protects the source or origin of goods and services, better known as a business's branding or trade dress. Trademark protection 
extends legal recognition to a brand's name and marketing that distinguishes it from other brands or sources of goods and services. Anyone who markets a good or service using confusingly similar branding, packaging, etc., can potentially be guilty of trademark infringement. Like copyright, these claims can be both criminal and civil. Copyright infringement can carry penalties of anything from a simple $150,000 per instance of infringement to a complete disgorging of all profits. The more commercial, willful, and widespread the infringement is, the more likely the government or rights holder is going to charge or sue. Trademark infringement's biggest remedies are an injunction halting the sale of the infringing goods, as well as compensation for the lost profits of the rights holder. If the infringement involves counterfeit goods, a plaintiff can request not just compensation, but also the seizure of goods without first notifying the alleged infringer. So how could Soldier Boy's Soldier Game consoles be legal? There are a few ways. First, it's possible that he'll obtain permission from all of the rights holders before selling and shipping his consoles to his customers. That means getting permission from Nintendo, Sony, Konami, etc. for every game that comes on the console. Or maybe he'll ship a console with a minimum number of games on it, leaving it to the customer to figure out how to get their favorite ROMs from their favorite publishers onto the system. But since publishers like Nintendo don't seem interested in allowing just anyone to license their games, customers would likely still have to get their ROMs from illegal sources. And if Mr. Boy helps his customers obtain illegal ROMs, or provides even one unauthorized game with his consoles, he could face the wrath of either a U.S. attorney, Customs and Border Protection, or the rights holders themselves. Ignorance of the law may be no excuse, as Mr. Wei has been sued for copyright infringement before after purportedly releasing his own work based on a track that was provided by another artist as a demo. Mr. Boy didn't respond in that case, earning himself a default judgment, but I couldn't find any further information, leading me to believe the matter may have been settled out of court. If Mr. Wei was sued over his game consoles and had to eat some of his offensive words, it wouldn't be the first time. In September of 2011, he released a song with lyrics aimed at belittling the masculinity of U.S. Army soldiers. In response to the backlash, Wei apologized. When I expressed my frustration with the U.S. Army, he said, not only did my words come out wrong, I was wrong to even speak them. So I write this to give my sincerest apology to all members of the United States military services, as well as their families that were offended by my most recent lyrics. Perhaps we'll be hearing such a statement from Mr. Wei after Nintendo or Sony have resolved their beef with Soldier. All right. Put my hat on. Get into character here again. Because holy crap, guys, it just happened. I'm literally going through my screenshots and collecting everything for this story, and all of a sudden, bam, the three consoles, the, the Game Boy console, the portable console, the Fuse console, and the HD console are all gone from his website, just gone. And then I go to Twitter and see if he's posted anything, and sure enough, he says, I had to boss up, I didn't have a choice at 5.23 p.m., which I guess is still Eastern time since I still have my computer set to Eastern time because I'm a moron, on the 29th of December. So just now, literally just an hour or so ago, uh, he admitted that he had to boss up or something and all the consoles are gone. So without knowing more, I'm assuming that everything that I just said was true and those things were illegal and he's realized that he's gonna get the ever loving crap suit out of them and wow so we're a little wired here and i'm gonna put this as a as a end of this thing and holy crap that's that's really interesting uh we'll follow up with it when we know more and thanks for watching sound good Thank you for joining me. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. I look forward to hearing your thoughts in the comments below. This is a community supported channel. 
please consider supporting us on patreon.com slash ljfrench. A big thank you to the following December 2018 supporters. At the $500 level is Justin Rogers. Thank you very much for your generous contribution. And at the $50 level, we have Jonathan Doe, John Steele, Gavin Bernard, Kyle Mudrock, Evie, Andy, Vera Montaigne, William Gonzalez, Michael Pierce, Terry Crisp, Richard Fournier, Spirit Bear, Rian Negre, Jax Merrick, and Daniel Perez. And thank you to the over 400 total supporters we have on Patreon.com that make this channel possible. Uh, once again, I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. I hope everyone has a wonderful Hogmanay celebration, and I will see you in 2019. No, actually, I'll still see you in 2018 for the Sunday show, but I will still see you in 2019. Love you all.